This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, it's almost time for those New Year's resolutions. Along with the typical picks like flossing every day and eating more vegetables, maybe branching out to make new personal connections is also on your list. We're throwing it back to a conversation from earlier this year, talking about just how hard it can be. And we're recommending a bunch of ways to find new friends in Pittsburgh as an adult. It's Wednesday, December 20th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I am back with writer and CityCast contributor Meg St. Esprit, who has all of that stuff I just said to contend with, kids and deadlines, and still manages to help the rest of us figure out our place. Thank you for coming here, Meg. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. Also, I'm going to apologize for my dogs a little bit. They're working on our sidewalk out front, and they are very excited about it. (laughs) We'll try to match their enthusiasm level. (laughs) So what's your experience been like here in Pittsburgh? Um, You know, I know you grew up here. I did not. So I don't know. What was the what was it like? Did you have your people immediately or have you kind of had to reinvent along the way? Yeah. So I grew up here, I mean, a bit out of the city, Beaver County and then Zillianople when I was a little bit older. It counts. (laughs) I know. Well, you know. (laughs) <laughs> if we're going to split ha- if we're going to split hairs, I'm a 724 phone number, you know, but I did. I had my people as kids. You know, I grew up doing horseback riding, showing horses, barrel racing, jumping. I was also super artsy into writing, which obviously I made my career. Um, I wrote a lot of stories as a kid. So, yeah, I had my people when I was younger. I think it gets a lot harder when you're an adult, right? Yeah, yeah. To like maintain friendships and relationships. Um, So you've got this piece in Pittsburgh City Paper about this exact thing, like, um, you know, finding new hobbies and hopefully some relationships as you do it. Um, What did you expect to hear from people? You know, it's funny. The idea for the story came from a neighbor posting a picture of joining their kid's karate class. And they said that it was something they wanted to do as a kid. Their parents couldn't afford. And once they could do it, they decided to do it. So going off of that idea, I just asked in various, you know, social media settings and in person at school pickup what people were into. And I was shocked. Like, I thought most adults were like me and have no idea what they want to do with their free time. But it turns out a lot of people have really cool hobbies. I talked to someone who does disco dancing, someone else who found out that salsa dancing is really their thing. I did talk to the neighbor who took up karate. It was as awesome as I hoped. So it's been a while and they're still into it. And then I talked to someone else who did roller derby, which is like the most badass thing like ever. the Steel City roller derby, like the legit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And then someone who built a race car. Like, what in the world? That is amazing. When I was reading that story, I was blown away because I was thinking you were going to be telling me a story about model cars. And like, no, this is a whole ass Porsche. No, he built, yeah, like a real moving car that he can ride in. It's incredible. But he was a kid who liked Legos and liked building. And so it's kind of interesting to see like how he catapulted that into an adult hobby, right? Did the folks that you talked to have any suggestions for people who, you know, maybe they do have their eye on something, but they're nervous to get started in this brand new thing with brand new people? Yeah, you know, that's the part they were all the most excited to talk about. Yes, they love their hobbies and sharing what they've made or what they're doing. But the emotional aspect of it is really what they just gushed about. Everyone said it was hard. They felt self-conscious. They felt like everyone was looking at them. They felt unskilled. But even if their skill didn't improve enough that they were an expert, they let go of that self-consciousness and realized it was really just about enjoying it. Um, There was a study out of Carnegie Mellon that just talked about how much a hobby can, 
you know, improve your happiness, your mood, make you sleep better, lower your stress, even improve your work performance. And everyone really just felt those effects. Um, the one guy I really loved, Patrick, he said, you know, life is short, just buy the Porsche, which he's the one who built the race car. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he just went for it. it it's awesome. Um, and I just love that because it can always feel like there's some roadblock to doing what you want to do. But sometimes you need to just go for it despite your reservations. Oh, that's great. Did you learn any tips for building friendships while trying something new like this for the first time? So I think one thing when you're joining a new hobby, you can obviously go to the class, do your thing and then leave. But definitely, even if it makes you nervous, even if you're an introvert, sometimes that time at the end when everyone's kind of wrapping up, make some connections. Maybe you can you know, follow each other on Instagram so you can check on your progress or maybe even like just grab a coffee around the corner. I think when we take those what feels like bold steps as adults, we might really be surprised that other people are looking for friends, too. And we don't actually seem like a weirdo. (laughs) That's always my fear, like that I'll seem like a weirdo for being like, do you want to get coffee? But like, clearly, there's a lot of us that want to make friends as adults. So, you know, it might be that I'm the one that broke the ice by saying it. Thank God there are people like you. (laughs) extroverted to a fault my husband says yeah (laughs) hey citycast listeners christmas is almost here and we're celebrating with a little open house on friday Yes, this Friday, December 22nd, the team is hosting a little get together from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at our offices on the 10th floor of the Benenham Trees Building downtown. There will be cookies and a smattering of tinsel, plus our Pittsburgh radio bestie, Kevin Gavin, formerly of WESA's The Confluence, will be broadcasting live from our studio on WZUM. It's all part of Kevin's 47th annual All Request Christmas Music Show. And if you're hanging with us, you might just get to make your request live on the air. Again, that's Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can drop by anytime or just listen to us on the radio. Tune in to WZUM at 101.1 FM in Pittsburgh and streaming at WZUM.org. We hope we see you there. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash Pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. So here at CityCast, we've been talking about this exact thing for a while, like how to make friends while learning a new thing. So we got the team to record a few of their hobbies or hobbies they want to try. Here's producer Sophia Lowe. If you're looking for a hobby you can do by yourself, at home, with friends, I really love getting invested in a new video game. Currently, some of my favorites are Hades, and it's a Greek mythology-inspired fighting game that's a little bit different every time. So I just love that so much. And if you're looking for something to play with friends, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time is also great, and that's a space shooter. And one thing I loved about Sophia's recommendation is that this is the kind of hobby that you can find community, right? Like through Reddit or Discord, but you can also just isolate and not have to deal with any humans at all. You can just play on your own. Um, So that one seemed like a really fun idea. Yeah, I think it's nice to realize that hobbies can fill different needs. Like some might need a social hobby and others really might need something that is just another way to check out instead of scrolling Instagram. (laughs) <laughs> totally. Um, and I should probably say, like here at CityCast, when we were talking about this, we needed a construction to sort of wrap our heads around it. So we were thinking like stuff that you've done that you recommend, something maybe that you've had your eye on to try, but you haven't gotten around to it yet or returned to it yet, or something that you are absolutely never going to do. But like it's aspirational. It looks really cool for someone else. Let's start with we've done it and we recommend it. Um, Meg, do you have any personal ones? Yeah, so I just did a candle making class in Bellevue at P-Square Sense. And it's funny because it's the type of thing I would never organize myself, Mm -hmm. but someone did it for me. So all I had to do was show up (laughs) and it was so enjoyable. Like just the process of 
helping to narrow down scents and figure out what goes well together. And then I got to leave with something I actually made and could use. Mm -hmm. Like the reward on that, the dopamine hit was big. And so (laughs) I want to go back. Like, I mean, that candle's not gone yet, but I'm like, what else can I make? Can I make laundry detergent? Can I make perfume? And they do have all of those things. So I think that that was really fun for me to see that if I actually put in the effort to go out and like do a class, it is worth it even though it feels like a lot, like one more thing. Totally. Um, And then my personal ones are, they're mostly fitness related. Um, I was really big into lifting for a while. Um, I played kickball through the Pittsburgh Sports League when I first moved here. Like that's how I found my first friends because it gave everyone like a time you had to show up for something and be sort of competitive. So you had like some automatic bonding built in. Um, That was really nice. Um, There's a lot of fun options here in Pittsburgh. Definitely. Kickball actually sounds fun because that's one game I feel like I do know the rules to. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And they have tons of options like tennis or dodgeball or basketball, baseball. There's a bunch of them. Um, So let's move on. Maybe ones that you have had your eye on but haven't gotten to pick up or pick back up. Um, Our own lead producer, Mallory Falk, uh, said that she has not is not actively practicing, but she has a hobby she can share, too. So during the peak of COVID, my pandemic hobby was learning how to play the banjo. I took a virtual banjo class. What was kind of funny was there were about 10 of us in the class. And so whenever we'd play, we would all um, have ourselves on mute because 10 people playing an instrument on Zoom at the same time would sound horrendous. And so every week when the instructor would tell us how much progress we were making, He had never actually heard any of us play a single note of banjo. So it was really hard to trust that we were making progress. But I ended up moving and got busy and haven't touched the banjo in over a year. So I would like to find a class here in Pittsburgh and start lessons back up. Because what you're hearing right now is me attempting to play for the first time since 2022. And clearly I have gotten very rusty. Awesome. I <laughs> know. I love it. I, f- I feel like if we keep going, we're going to have a city cast band. Yeah. <laughs> Not with me. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> There's always an egg, a tambourine, a triangle for anyone who wants to make a joyful noise. Uh, and then newsletter editor Francesca DeBecco also had a, a good suggestion. Of all the storytelling mediums that I've tried, I've never gotten to make a zine. I'd love to try it. If you've never seen one, it's a small pamphlet-like booklet that's self-published and really focuses on the artful telling of stories. It's often DIY, collaged, or photocopied. I just think they're so cool. Um, So let's move on to the ones that are aspirational, Um, not in our wheelhouse, not for right now. But we love the idea of someone getting getting into them. Um, Somebody in my DMs suggested Bowling League. That is not for me personally, but I love the competitive spirit of that. Um, It feels very retro, very old school, kind of like true to Pittsburgh, too. Um, And then another person suggested circus arts. So like the aerial silks and that kind of thing. Um, It's I've done a class for that. The intro one I have never never been so bad at a skill in my life on the first try. It was it was upsetting. It looks really cool to see our babysitter does circus arts and I would be terrified. And I think a lot of my aspirational ones kind of fall into that category. Like I'm very fascinated by skydiving, bungee jumping. I would love to make it down to New River Gorge for the Gauley River season, which is the really good whitewater rafting when they open the dam. Yeah. But all of that, I'm just a little like, oh, we have four kids. What if I die? Um, (laughs) But I think, you know, finding some ways to do those high risk things that maybe are a little safer, like indoor skydiving or Mm -hmm. I don't know how you safely whitewater raft the some of the hardest whitewater in the world. Maybe they need to start me at the bottom. But yeah, some of those things that give you that adrenaline rush. I'm fascinated by them, but I just don't know if I'm brave enough. And you can always start smaller, like um, Ohio Pile has some really nice, really calm rapids, depending on which trip you take. Um, You could also do kayaking along the Allegheny. That's a really fun one. Um, Or Surf's Up Paddle Adventures does um, all kinds of trainings, like from 101 to really complicated overnight camping on paddle boards. So there's a little bit of water adventure all over the place, depending on what kind of thing you're into. 
Definitely, definitely. We love kayaking for sure. The stand-up paddle boards, I don't have the skill, though. <laughs> <laughs> Meg, thank you so much for your story in Pittsburgh City Paper um, and for sharing it with us today. Sure, no problem. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking the show, we hope you'll tell someone, rate us, leave us a nice review, and of course, maybe, maybe consider becoming a founding member of CityCast Pittsburgh. It'll help you stay up to date on the news, go out more, and maybe meet some of those goals for 2024. CityCast Pittsburgh can help you with that. Every day we're in your podcast feeds and our newsletter editor, Francesca DeBecco, she's in your inbox, giving you the latest on what everyone in the Berg is talking about. Now we need your support to help us do this work. If you become a member of CityCast Pittsburgh, we've got fun perks like ad-free listening and a shout out in our newsletter. So join today at membership.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. Meg, what kind of dog do you have? Um, We have a Cavalier Spaniel and then a I think a French bulldog, but she might be something else. I don't know. (laughs) I feel like Frenchies are kind of distinctive. She's kind of a weird looking one, so that's why.